Hey guys, it's me, the Afro, and I'm doing what I call the Entitled Trainer Challenge. Basically, the only Pokemon I'm going to have in my team are Pokemon that I'm given, and I'm not just allowed to make my team OP to try and defeat everything. Um, so basically, I'm going to have to be a bit smart with training, make sure I pick specific stats and specific Pokemon to grind on, and make sure I pick the right moves. So let's go into it. Of course, we have to name our rival. The rival's name is Butts. Enjoy it. Let us get going. The first Pokemon we see is a Pikachu. Professor Oak catches this for Butts, but being the butt that he is, he steals the Pokemon I wanted, so instead we get the Pikachu. We have our first battle, and luckily paralyzes Eevee with a critical hit. The second Thundershock gets us the win. Yeah. Then we become a postman, or if you're in the US, a mailman, grabbing Oak's parcel, bringing it back to him, and getting a Pokedex that we're only going to use twice. Now, as I said earlier, we've got to be smart when we're training, and Pikachu's no exception. We're going to use Mankey and Nidoran to give us some decent attack, and Spearow will give us some speed and some easy experience overall. Once we hit level 11, we learn Quick Attack, a normal type move. This is why we need a good attack stat. Normal type moves are always physical attacks and use attack. And for the first gym, we're going to need a lot of it. Butt shows up being a butt again, so we feign a Spearow. Eevee gives us a little bit of trouble with a few sand attacks after we paralyze, but we manage to get through it with some quick attacks and win. On the way up, an old man stops us to teach us how to catch Pokemon, that thing we're very rarely going to do. And we go into the Viridian Forest, making sure that we get all of the trainers and kill some Caterpie and Metapod for some easy EXP and a little bit of defense. Once we get through, it's a quick trip to the Pokemon Center and then we go to the gym to show off our swole Pikachu. We managed to get rid of the Diglett with a couple of quick attacks and managed to level up and learn Double Team, our second important move. Sanshu tries to hit us, but Double Team means that we kill it with a few more quick attacks. It's not really that difficult, to be honest. Healed up, and we fight Brock and use the best tactic to defeat him with a Pikachu. We Double Team until his Geodude misses, and we Tail Whip and Quick Attack. And then we Double Team every time his Geodude manages to land a hit. It takes time, but Geodude goes down. Onyx shows up, and for some reason, he always uses Bide. That gives us time to get some tail whips in, and in between bides we get a few quick attacks to hit him. He can't hit us, and it's only a matter of quick attacks until he's down and we get our first badge. Now we go further. We went into Mount Moon, we found lots of Zubat, we picked up a strange fossil, and then we beat up Team Rocket. Cool. We're in Cerulean Sea, and it just so happens that someone has a spare Pokemon, a Bulbasaur. It's going to be very useful for this gym, and it's quite tanky as a Venusaur, so we'll grab that as our second team member. We defeat Butts and find some Oddish to get Pikachu and Bulbasaur's special stat up. This guy wants to give away his Charmander because he's a bad trainer, so we'll be even worse and take it. Bulbasaur evolves while we fight some of the trainers on the way to Bill, and we manage to get it to level 18 before we even get to his house. Adorable little Pikachu thinks we found a third Pokemon to add to our team, but he's got it wrong. It's Bill instead. He gives us the SS tickets so that we can party out on a boat, and we head back to Cerulean Pokemon Center. I set up the team with Charmander at the front to get some EXP. The junior trainer's Goldeen gives me some trouble, but Pikachu comes in to save the day, and we're ready for Misty. Or so I thought. I didn't heal the first time, and that turned out to be a problem. Ivysaur had enough HP to use Leech Seed and use Growl a few times, but Ivysaur doesn't end up healing any damage with Star Use, so I Vine Whip and just get out of the fight. Switching in Pikachu with Starmie gets me down to half health, and only have 12 left when I double team. The third Bobble Beam hits and gets rid of Pikachu, Ivysaur dies instantly, and Water Gun gets Charmander. I try again, this time keeping Ivysaur with good enough health to Leech Seed Starmie. A few Vine Whips later, and we've defeated Misty Starmie and got our second badge! Which means we can finish up what we need to do and head to our next destination. I got a ATM, I killed some ratatas, then I walked underground to reach Vermilia City. I broke a relationship, and then I killed a butterfree. They turned the matter, I leveled up and turned into a chameleon. Yes, these songs are most probably never going to happen after this one, so don't worry. It's going to stop being cringy now. The next Pokemon we need is the Squirtle that this Officer Jenny will give us, but we can't get it until we get the Thunder Badge, so we'll be back. Normally, I'd jump straight onto the SSN, but with the amount of fire types on board and our Charmeleon not being powerful enough, it turns out not to be the best idea. So instead, I went over to the grass to the east, dealt with some of the trainers and killed some wild Pokemon, and then went back. With my newly strengthened team, SSN ended up being just a little bit doable. I found a random Great Ball, which surprisingly will actually be useful. 
Of course, we've run into some butts again. Spiro's as easy as it always is, and Ratata, Sandshrew, and Eevee are no match for my mid evolutions. Captain gives me cut after I help him throw up, and I use that to replace Ivysaur's tackle for a bit of a better normal type move. Now it's time for the gym! Luck helped me find the first and second switch the moment I get into the gym, so I spend my time fighting the other trainers to get some experience for Ivysaur and Charmeleon. Now it's time for the hardest fight, Lieutenant Surge. Surge has one Pokemon, Raichu. This Raichu is dangerous, but Ivysaur should be able to survive enough. Raichu hits with a Mega Punch, but isn't too bad, and I manage to counter with a Leech Seed. Wasting a turn with X Speed, I get two more cuts in before I switch to Pikachu. Mega Punch kinda gets him quite bad. A quick attack gets some of his health down, but doesn't faint Raichu. Charmeleon's next with a couple of embers until it's put down as well. It doesn't look good, with a cut and leech seed combo still not fainting this Raichu. For some reason, Raichu growls rather than actually attacking me, letting a final leech seed get rid of it and let me win. Seriously, I don't know why it didn't kill me. I get the badge from Lieutenant Surge, but I quickly realise something about this run. Without being able to go on power level, I'm only arriving at places in the story and gyms at relatively low levels. My highest level Pokemon only just about match standard NPCs, let alone gym trainers and leaders. I'm likely actually going to have to use tactics to win a lot of these fights rather than just brute strength. And both to help me out with tactics and to continue the game, I need to catch some Pokemon. But not to use in my fight, just for one specific item. To get the HM for Flash, you need to have caught 10 Pokemon. You can go through dark caves without it, but it takes way longer. Flash will also be a very useful move for us later. I catch a Pidgeotto, Rattata, Pidgey, Drowsy, and Diglett to get to 10 Pokemon, release all of them, and go and grab my HM. Now that we have Flash, we can head through the rock tunnel and get to Lavender Town. Leading with Squirtle, we take down the trainers along the way and it evolves into Wartortle, giving us a decent offense as we deal with the rock and ground types. It's been quite a while since I played through Gen 1, so even with Flash I get a bit lost, but eventually we get to Lavender Town. We're only sticking around for a quick heal though, it'll make sense later. For now, it's time for us to fight through the trainers, get to the underground walkway, and head west to Celadon City. I get the coin case from this failure in the restaurant, and grab all of the hidden coins in the game corner that he could have picked up. All of them give me enough to be able to get an Abra. I spend a bit of time leveling up, and eventually get a Kadabra with a psychic move. I managed to get through all of the trainers in Erika's gym, but battling her was a different story. My Charmeleon just wasn't powerful enough to take down the Weeping Bell, and Gloom's Petal Dance finished off the rest of my team. So for now, let's find that weird poster and head down to the Team Rocket hideout. The hideout's the perfect place to level up. Because most of Team Rocket use Poison-type Pokemon, Kadabra can level up. Also, everyone's low level enough for Charmeleon to have some fun and get to level 30. While we're in here, I grab an HP up and bring Pikachu's base health up for later. After getting rid of the last grunt, we get the lift key. We head down further into the basement, cut through Meowth, Coughing and Ekans, and deal with Giovanni, making sure to get some levels onto Kadabra and Water while we do it. Our reward is the Self Scope, which Pikachu seems to be happy about. With the levels we got from Team Rocket, you'd think we'd be ready, but this is still a really difficult fight. Even with the training we've done, while level 30 Charmeleon's Ember doesn't really do a huge amount of damage. Vine stops me from attacking momentarily, but with patience we manage to break through. Weeping Bell's heavy special stat brings down Charmeleon, but not without managing to get some heavy damage onto it. Ivysaur follows up with a couple of well-placed cuts and we're almost there with a pretty decent team still left over. Kadabra manages to get some heavy damage in with Confusion, bringing Ivysaur back in to soak up some of the acid attacks and giving out cuts eventually does the trick. After the fight, Ivysaur evolves and I use the Mega Drain TM we got from Erika on it to replace Razor Leaf to try and keep it in battles for longer. I go and get the bike I forgot to pick up, and beat the fighting dojo. I don't need a fighting type, so I don't pick anything up, but at least Kadabra got some levels. Butts is easy, and this is why I switched the order around and didn't start in Lavender Town. At the level needed for Celadon City, the tower's easy, and we get more time to spend enjoying such phrases as... Kiki 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 Qua! Hoo hoo hoo! Beat me not! Ghost! No! Qua! Give me your so soul? Wait, what? Give me blow. What sort of kids game is this? Defeating them has Kadabra learn recover and forget teleport. We put the spirit of Marowak to rest by defeating it, rescue Fuji and get the Poke Flute. Next in our sequence is to go far south enough to get rid of the Snorlax for some levels. I can't catch it so I might as well use it to level up my team. After we've done that we head back to Saffron and tackle the Sylph Company. 
Saffron is the most difficult at this stage because it's expected that we'd head over to Fuchsia first. I try to leave most of the battles available. You'll see why in a little bit. I always get lost in here, but I eventually figure out the teleport pads and find the card key. After a quick rest, we find Butts again. You guessed it, he's being a butt again. His last Pokemon, Jolteon, at level 40 gives me the most trouble. It took down Venusaur and Charmeleon, but flashing with Pikachu enough times to make it miss and getting a couple of Psybeams in gets rid of it. After Butts is gone, we get our final team member, Lapras. At level 15, however, it will need to be the lead to get some experience and level up. Because I didn't explore earlier, I have a lot of high-level Pokemon I can use to level up Lapras and Kadabra. At level 18, Lapras starts being able to get rid of some Pokemon itself. Giovanni's up next, and his level 41 Nidoqueen gives me some grief. Switching to Kadabra and getting a Psybeam in deals with it. Because the president is rich, he can give us anything, so he gives us a very useless Master Ball. I would have preferred a PS5 pre-order, but you know, fine, we'll take this instead. And that's the Sylph Company over and done with. Now I would continue, but because this game is, you know, long, I'm splitting it into two episodes, but the next episode should be up in a day or two. In that one, I want to see if I manage to actually defeat the Elite Four, or if I end up having to give up because I can't just continuously train and OP myself. Make sure you've subscribed for the next episode, and if you like Pokemon content, maybe check out our Nuzlocke run on Pokemon Crystal. We need to get back to it, but there's lots of episodes available for you to catch up on. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you back here. Bye!